This is section 5.5, 5, the substitution rule, objective 2, which is to evaluate indefinite integrals using the substitution method. We already did this in objective 1, but some people have a hard time just looking at the integrand and seeing how to go backwards. So in this objective, we actually formalize the steps that you can follow all the time so that even if you can't see it, you'll still be able to go backwards and find the antiderivatives. So the steps you're going to follow are first, if the integral is not a simple one for which you have a rule, in other words, it's not on that green cheat sheet of integrals, then you're going to look for an outer function and an inside u, which is just a function of x, for which a constant multiple of u prime is also inside the integral. So we're looking for that inner function whose derivative is in the integral as well. Once you find your u, you'll take its derivative with respect to x, and you'll solve for dx. Now notice that the derivative of the inside function will end up on the denominator. That's because we are doing the chain rule backwards. So instead of multiplying by the derivative of the inside, we will be dividing by the derivative of the inside. We will then substitute in our u and replace our dx with its equivalent term involving du. We'll move all the constant factors outside of the integral, and if you've done this correctly, every variable that is not a u is going to disappear. If it doesn't, you did it wrong. This should create a constant multiple of an easy indefinite integral that's on your green sheet. If it doesn't, you made a mistake. You need to go back to step one and try again. If it does, then use your integral rules to evaluate your new integral in terms of u, and then substitute the original variable back into your final answer. And don't forget that plus c. With example one, we're now going to follow these steps. So let's remember that step one is to look for an inner function and an outer function. And we want the inner function's derivative to be inside the integral or at least a constant multiple of it. So in this particular case, we can see an inner function, this 3x squared plus 2, and its derivative, which is 6x, well, I've got part of it there. It's a constant multiple. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down what our u is. It's a 3x squared plus 2. And then we'll take the derivative with respect to x, and we will isolate dx. We want to solve for dx. When I do that, the, the derivative of our u ends up on the bottom. So now I'm going to replace both u and dx with what they equal. So I'll have a u to the fifth, and then the things that stay unchanged are the x, and then I replace the dx with what it equals. If we do this properly, we will end up with the non-u variables canceling, and we'll have a constant that we can bring out in front, and what will be left will be one of our easy integrals that's on our green sheet. So how do we go backwards on this power rule? Well, it will be u to the sixth over six plus c. Then our final step is we go back to everything in terms of our original variable. So we will replace this u with what u equals, and we'll get 3x squared plus 2 raised to the sixth, all over 36 plus c. You can double check yourself by taking the derivative of this, and you should get the inside back. So again, let's look at b and do the same process. We can see that this log natural of x is inside a power, so we're going to try that as our initial choice for u. If I now take the derivative of that u, I will get a 1 over x. And if I isolate dx, I will end up with an x times a du. So we're going to replace both the u and the dx. So we'll replace the u and the dx. Everything else will stay the same. So we'll have the integral of our u to the eighth over x times, we replace our dx with an x times du. If we've done this properly, 
the non-u variables will disappear and we'll have left an integral that we can integrate. So we can go backwards with u to the 8th and get a u to the 9th over 9 plus c. Our final step is to replace the u with what it equals in terms of x and we'll get log natural of x to the 9th over 9 plus c. With our final example of this type, we can see that our inner function is what's raised to the power. So we're going to replace that inner function and the dx. We write down u is the sine of 3x. We know that's a good choice because if I take the derivative of that, I get a cosine of 3x times a 3. Notice that that cosine of 3x is showing up. We're just short the 3. So we'll take care of the 3 by isolating dx dx will become du over the cosine of 3x times 3. And now when I do my substitution, I will replace the boxes. So I'm replacing the sine of 3x with a u and the dx with what it equals in terms of u. Notice that everything that is not u's disappears and I have a constant that can come out in front. I've now created an integral that I can go backwards on. Use the power rule. I have u to the fifth over 5 plus the constant. Plug my u back in and I'll get sine of 3x to the fifth plus c all divided by 15. With example 2, our outer function is a trig function. So we're looking for things that are inside trig functions. So we're going to replace the u and the dx. So u is 3x plus 11. If I take the derivative with respect to x, I will get a 3, which will enable me to solve for dx. And then I can replace. Remember, everything that is not in the box will stay the same. And things that are in the box get replaced. This creates a constant that can come out in front. And now what's remaining is something that I know how to go backwards on. What did I take the derivative of with respect to u that gave me sine? That's negative cosine of u plus c. Substitute in the u, we get a negative one-third cosine of 3x plus 11 plus c. If we look at our next one now, it's a little tricky because it looks like sine is inside a square and so we at first might think we want to put a box around the sine of 4x, but the derivative of sine is cosine and cosine is not in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this so that it creates something that I've seen on my green sheet. Realize that 1 over sine squared is the same as cosecant squared and cosecant squared is on our green sheet. So in this case, my inner function is just the 4x. And I'm going to replace both the dx and the u. If I take the derivative of u, I get 4. Isolate dx. I get du over 4. Go back and rewrite. Anything that is not in the box is going to stay the same. Anything that is in a box gets replaced. We now have a constant that can come out in front, and I can rewrite the integral as 1 fourth, the integral of cosecant squared u with respect to u, and I can answer the question, what did I take the derivative of with respect to u that gave me cosecant squared? And the answer will be cotangent of u negative plus c. So my last step is to replace the u with what it equals and I'm done. With our third and final example, we're going to look at general integrals with substitution where the outer function is a little harder to pinpoint. 
So on this one, we're looking for an inside function whose derivative is also inside. And if we look carefully, we can see that this 1 minus r cubed has a derivative that is a 3r squared negative, which is a multiple of this. Or rather, I should say, this one's a multiple of that. So if I put a box around my u, which is 1 minus r cubed, and I take the derivative with respect to x, then I can isolate my dx as du over negative 3r squared. So I'll come here and replace everything that's in a box with things involving u, and things that aren't in boxes will stay the same. So we can see here that things that have r's will disappear, and I'm left with a negative 3. So I can rewrite this as a negative 3 times the integral of a u to the negative 1 half. And now I can do the antiderivative by adding 1 and dividing by the new power. If I finish this up by replacing my u with what it equals, I get a negative 6 u to the 1 half plus c. I could double check myself by taking the derivative of this and plugging it in. If we look at part b, it's a little more tricky because I want the antiderivative of tangent. So what do I take the derivative of with respect to x that gives me tangent? Well, there's nothing on the green sheet that get, tells me a derivative that is tangent. So in order to evaluate this, I need to rewrite tangent. Tangent, if you recall, is the same as sine of x over cosine of x. And now I have two options for a u. The derivative of sine gives me cosine, but notice that it does not give me 1 over cosine, which is what's inside this integral. So sine would not be a good choice for u. Cosine, on the other hand, is an excellent choice because its derivative is negative sine. So I'm going to replace the u and my dx. If I take the derivative of u with respect to x, I'll get a negative sine of x, which means I can isolate my x, my dx, which means I can isolate my dx to get du over negative sine of x. And now I go back to my integral and I replace everything that's in the green boxes. If I do this properly, everything that has x's in it will disappear, and I'm left with a constant coefficient of a negative 1, and inside I have a 1 over u du. Well, the antiderivative of 1 over u is ln of the absolute value of u plus c. Replace u with what it equals, and I am done.